Welcome back to Ducks Live. Ducks closing out this three-game homestand tonight as they take on the New York Islanders for the first of two meetings this season. Now it's time to shift gears and take a look at the medical side of sports. We're joined now by Dr. Reza Omid, Assistant Professor of Orthopedic Surgery, Keck Medicine of USC. Doctor, thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule to spend some time with us here tonight. And of course, the sport of hockey, we all know very physical. Guys get injured night in and night out. But I want to talk specifically about the shoulder. What's the most typical type of injury when it comes to the shoulder in hockey? Well, the shoulder has so many structures yep. that it's just predisposed to injury. But I would think that tendonitis of the shoulder is a very common problem. It's a precursor to a tear, so it's usually from inflammation, from repetitive use or repetitive injury that builds up over time. And these types of tendons are the ones that go on to rupture. So the biceps tendon in the shoulder is probably the most common reason for shoulder pain. Yeah, so if you start with that, and we're not talking about surgery, we're talking about preventative maintenance or is there injections or what, you know, what, what is the first course of action with those type of injuries? That's a great question. So the shoulder is stabilized by four muscles called the rotator cuff muscles. The rotator cuff muscles keep the, the shoulder centered. And when a rotator cuff is weak, it can't stabilize the shoulder. And so the other muscles that move will cause the shoulder to, to move abnormally. And the tissue will impinge, which will cause repetitive trauma over time. So stabilizing by strengthening your rotator cuff will keep this, the shoulder centered so it decreases the inflammation and impingement that it sees. Dr. Omid, how has the treatment for something like this gotten better over the years to get the players, either keep them on the ice or get them out there quicker? I think rotator cuff strengthening has become something that's very common as an everyday activity. It's like brushing your teeth. Okay. It's for shoulder health. So really a lot of cable work on these people they, they keep their muscles strong as opposed to waiting until there's a problem and then dealing with it. Okay, well, I'll harken back to my day when I played and I ended up having <laughs> a shoulder injury and uh, ended up having a labrum tear. And uh, they did procedure through the arthroscopic surgery. So now, is that more common? Is that the only way to repair those things? Or is there still kind of the, I don't know, they called it the fillet back in the day? I think nowadays arthroscopic repair of the labrum is kind of standard of care. I don't know anybody that actually opens the shoulder to fix the labrum because now that we have a better understanding of the shoulder, we know that when we used to take down muscles to get somewhere, that actually caused problems. So now arthroscopically, we're able to bypass those tissues without taking them down to address the pathology deep inside the shoulder. So I think that's very common nowadays. Doctor, hockey players never want to leave the ice. We always hear about them playing through injuries. So when something does happen, should they get treated? Should they take some time off? so to speak, or are you going to let them play through it if it's not that serious? Well, we all know. I mean, I, I deal with athletes as well, and it's really hard to keep them out. So yeah. our job is to be able to help you be able to do what you want to do. So whether that's masking the symptoms until you get through the season, we'll do that. And then when you have some time to deal with the issue more prolonged, then we'll fix it for a longer cure. And it's uh, the rehabilitation after a surgery. Uh, I remember my arm being in a sling for three months. It was uh, excruciating to try to get that to be straightened out. Are they really more active and proactive with getting the arm and the shoulder moving right away? Three months of a shoulder sling sounds a lot to me. I, I think the maximum nowadays would be about six weeks because if you immobilize the shoulder too much, you definitely will lose motion. So there's a fine balance between aggressive rehabilitation and re-injury that you have to kind of, you know, dance when you do these patients. But yes, we do want to move the shoulder more aggressively nowadays, but it has to be within a defined parameter so that you don't re-injure the structures that you've repaired. Dr. Rezo Mead, Keck Medicine, USC, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Good stuff. I think yeah. we're all taking notes here because we all have I'm making shoulder my injuries here. <laughs> we'll get phone calls from both Thank of us, you. I'm sure. All right, we're going to take another time out here at Ducks Live, but when we do come back, we're going to continue our conversation.